Good morning grade 10s and welcome to your exam prep session. Um, in this video I'm going to be going through Word and Excel, everything you need to know um, in terms of your upcoming finals. Alright, so this video is just going to focus on the practical. Um, I'm going to look at last term's uh, prac exam and then in another video I'm going to look at the theory that you need to know for your finals. Okay, so if we look at Microsoft Word, I'm not going to go through the basics of, you know, creating a document, etc. Um, I'm just going to type out some text here. So, blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah. And by now we should know um, that we've got our font category where we can change the font style, where we can change the font size, make things bold, um, italic, and underlined. Um, we've also got this section here where we can increase the font size and decrease it. We've got this section here where we can choose the sentence case, make everything, you know, uppercase in capitals, sentence case with capitals at the beginning um, or anything else that they want us to do. We can also, and we must highlight first, we can highlight uh, a particular area of text. Um, we can go no color to take that away. Okay, so to remove that highlight and we can also go and highlight the actual color of the text itself. Okay, so all that is done here in the font section. Then let me just uh, copy and paste that and do some more blah, 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 blah. Wonderful text that we've got there. We look at our paragraph section. Um, here you can see we have bullets up here on top that I'll go through, but I want you to look at this. So we've got these arrows and they increase and decrease an indent. So if you're not too sure what an indent is, when I click on it, you'll see what it does, sort of like your tab. Okay, so um, just remember they might ask you to do that, probably will. Um, if you go to this little arrow here in paragraph, you'll see everything is in here. So we've got indents and spacing, we can do general alignment. Um, if they want the indent from the left or right according to a particular number of centimeters, that's where you'll do it. Your spacing, if they have exact, um, you know, specifications in terms of what they and how you uh, they want you to space things, this is where you will do it. Your line spacing over here with single, exactly, multiple, um, and whatever else they want you to do. Okay, so those things are there. So if I click on this, I can increase an indent or decrease it. I can adjust the spacing as you can see. Um, and then I can also do my alignment. Left, center, right, and justified. Okay. Then I've also got my um, style section. Okay. You'll usually be asked to... Um, change a heading to a particular style so you'll see you'll have to actually click on that please go through that so that you know where it is if you need or if there isn't anything there please indicate to the invigilator um, so that we know um, if there's a problem there or not okay so we've got all that sorted um, okay find and replace you'll see if we click on find um, this will just help us to find a particular word Okay. Most of the time you're going to end up using replace because they're going to want you to find a particular word and replace it with something else. Now, when you go to more, um, this will just give you some more options in terms of if, if they want you to, to format it or they want you to do something special to it, um, whatever the case may be. But this is where you will do it. You've also got your replace and replace all. So this is just to... Um, if they want you to replace one instance of that word, so let's say they want you to replace computer to PC, and they only want you to do it to the first word, okay? Then you would use replace. But if they want you to replace all instances, then obviously you're going to choose replace all. Right, the next one they usually ask you about is drop caps. So when you go to drop cap, you will first of all need to highlight whatever it is you want to actually drop cap. So let's say I'm going to drop cap the letter J over here. Then I'll go to my insert tab and on my text section here. There you can see it. Add a drop cap. 
and by default I've got two options which is dropped in in margin um, usually I suggest go to drop cap options on there um, they'll usually ask you to do the drop cap the reason we use this option is because they will tell you how many lines to actually do that and how many centimeters from the text it should be okay so that's important because that's usually a few marks for you to do there right then um, the only other thing really is again just in your home tab in the in fact this whole section here your, your font paragraph styles and, and editing um, that's where most of the marks are going to come from right so the only other thing to do now is let's insert an image okay so they will give you the image they'll tell you to insert it but there's one or two things that we just need to know okay so let's just insert this image and we'll wait for that to load let me just see on the question paper okay usually they want you to insert an image um, they will tell you where the image must go and what the size must be so uh, you can see the image is here you can see that I can resize it okay you can see that I can resize it however have a look at this section over here with the size you'll see it's 6.64 and 10.98 so as I resize it you see how the numbers change now um, one of the things they usually ask you to do is to change it let's say to five centimeters by five centimeters and you'll see immediately there we go okay so when I click on it ah but there's a problem it doesn't give me five by five so if they want you to do it exactly you know to to a specific centimeters or specific size um, just click on this little down arrow here in the corner and take the tick out of lock aspect ratio okay and then click OK so what that's going to do is it's not going to force it to stay the same so now I can go five centimeters by five centimeters and that's what it is okay it doesn't look great but yeah that's that's just how you're going to do it now the last one is if I want to put this into my text you can see if I do that this is what happens to my text and then they give me a little icon here if they don't you can let me actually just click on that um, they're going to give you different layout options so you'll see here you've got things like square and you see what happens to the text around it if I go tight you can see it comes a little closer um, I can go through and that means the text will actually go through that if I click on this one the take the the pictures in the background um, so you have different options um, and this will usually come up when you click on the picture your format tab comes up and there you can go and do that you can even position it wherever you want it to be um, but this is just so that you know where to actually do this you have different styles here as well in case they want you to do that and then uh, I think one other thing would be to let's just insert a shape Okay, so we're going to go insert, we're going to go shape, and let's see what we can use. Um, okay, let's use the shape. So I've got this shape over here, and I want to insert a picture into this shape. Okay, so I can go right click, I can go to format shape. And when it comes to fill, I can then say, man, I actually want to fill this with a picture. Okay. Um, it'll then you know just put a default picture in there but if we go to picture source and we say insert um, we can then actually go and choose a picture of our choice okay let me and I load it from a file and let's use the same one and there you can see I've now inserted a picture into my shape and obviously I can go and format um, that as is so those are the three things uh, you need to know there in terms of pictures uh, let's have a look okay the only other one is our header and our footer so let's let's go and do that so when I go to the insert tab I've got header and footer right so at the moment I've got no headers I've got no footers you can see when I double click in there um, if you want to see if you have anything obviously it'll display but if you double click at the top of your document you'll see everything else grays out and you've now got header because now you are in the header section and if I go and type things out here 
and I say close header and footer, that gets grayed out and the rest sort of comes alive. Um, the same will happen at the bottom if I choose to do that there. Okay, so it's insert, um, header and footer, and again they will tell you which one. I think in your prac in October, um, you were told to insert the blank three column header. And obviously when you click there, um, you will indicate one, two, three, whatever they want you to put in and say close. So every time you go to a new page, you'll see that header is then on the new page. Last thing that I need just to touch on is the page border. Okay, so let's see where that is. Ah, okay, so in our design tab, we're going to go all the way over to the right hand side. Um, we've got watermark. Remember, these are the default watermarks that we have. And if you want to insert a watermark that is different to this, you'll have to go to custom watermark. Okay, in your custom watermark, you can, this is where you'll actually go and insert a picture or specific text or anything like that. Okay, so that's where we're going to do that. Then page color, obviously we can go and change, as you can see there, the color of the actual page. And then page border, obviously this is now where we're going to insert a border. They will tell us in the question paper um, which border to choose, what the color of the border needs to be, what the width of the border needs to be, if it needs to be an art border, if it needs to be for the whole document, all those types of things. And once you're done, you just click OK. All right, so as long as you know where everything is and you follow the instructions, grade 10s, you will be fine.